Welcome to Recently Logged, where this week we're talking about the hit horror comedy, Stab. Coming back at you with another late night episode. Another late night episode. Doo, doo, doo. We need a little late night intro anytime we to record at night. We, we release these at noon though, so for, yes, the, but, but, for the listeners. <laughs> it matters on recording time. <laughs> And we're recording this at night. We are recording so it. So this night. is another late night recently logged. Again, we need a theme song for it. <laughs> need, a, need a little jingle. A little jingle that for, would be nice. for a late night th- recently logged. Anytime, anytime we do a late night one, it's like do do do. Put the people to sleep before yeah. the episode begins. Put some like put put some like a uh, relaxing ambience <sighs> behind those episodes. How nice. As the ones to fall asleep to. This is one of the ones to fall asleep. <laughs> it's one to. of the ones to fall asleep to, guys. Take note. <laughs> but yeah, we're talking about we're talking about stab this week. Stab, a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's a good movie. I I don't. <laughs> you you guys saw the premiere, Ruby. You're gonna you're gonna confuse people and they're gonna turn off the video. <laughs> I, I would hope our listener base would understand <laughs> if they if they had seen Scream Two anyway. Yeah. Um. But no, I mean, I was at the premiere. <laughs> I was at the premiere. I was at the premiere for That's crazy. Yeah, they had a really cool publicity <laughs> stunt. <laughs> it was wild. I can't believe it was real. <laughs> uh, fake, you mean? Fake? Yeah, it was just a publicity stunt. Good golly. <laughs> <laughs> And that's good special that's effects. That's good special effects, <laughs> ladies and gents. Uh, but yeah, this week we're talking about Scream 2. Uh, <laughs> if you recall, if, you've, if you're a listener of the podcast. I recall. Uh, two weeks ago, at the beginning of good old October, which uh, we're three weeks into October. My goodness. Um, Flying by. Crazy. Um, <laughs> I need m- my video to be finished. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you recall. But if you recall, we did Scream. Uh, now we're doing Scream we 2. Scream. Two weeks from now, we'll be doing Scream 3. Oh, my goodness. When will it end? It, it goes on and <laughs> it on. It just keeps going. <laughs> I can't believe it. But yeah, we're talking about the Scream series, dissecting it, breaking it down with Robbie's articulation of all of his deep my... thoughts and opinions. <laughs> I, I, I I pride myself. I'm like, oh, I have, a, I have a fun movie podcast where I talk about, like movies and what i think of them and then on the first scream episode i like floundered around looking for anything cohesive to say about scream and i'm about to do the same thing again i feel like there's so much to grab out of no there's so much that's the thing there's so much to grab out of them i feel like i'm too dumb to get everything (laughs) but robbie they're dumb movies they are dumb they're dumb movies that's what i with smart stuff that's what i adore about kevin williamson he's such a good screenwriter (laughs) Oh, Kevin! Well, speaking of Kevin Williamson, speaking of Kevin Williamson, should we tell the people what they need to know about the production? We should tell them. We should tell them all the stuff about Scream Two. All the stuff, all of it. Okay, well, maybe not all of it. We're just we're just gonna <laughs> stick to the greatest hits, you know. Okay, greatest hits of Scream Two we can do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, don't touch that dial because we're going over the basic facts at night. <laughs> We play the jingle again here. Yeah, okay. We play the jingle again. <laughs> uh, so the, yeah, <laughs> the basic facts at night. Uh, <laughs> Prepare to make trivia. I don't know, interesting again. <laughs> so yes, as as I said, this week we're talking about Scream Two, which is a 1997 movie, one year after Scream. Believe it or not, uh, it is a rated it's R. It's a pretty fast turnaround. Um, it is two hours long. Uh, its little IMDb description is two years after the first series of murders as Sydney acclimates to college life. Someone donning the ghost face costume be- begins a new string of killings. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. We've got Nev Campbell. We've got Courtney Cox. We've got David Arquette. We've got Jada Pinklet, Pinkett, Pinkett, sorry, Pinkett <laughs> Smith, Omar Epps, uh, Pauletta Patterson. So this I like I like a Paletta good literary. Patterson. That's a good name. That's a good name. Uh, <laughs> directed by Wes Craven, Heck written yeah. by Kevin Williamson. Heck yeah. Char- wait, it's, a, it's a, I've never seen this before. It specifically credits characters by Kevin Williamson and then story by Kevin Williamson. Interesting. <laughs> Which is weird why. to That's mention it twice. Um, I wonder because he wrote the first one. Maybe that's the only reason. Well, I can yeah, think yeah, of, yeah. But, like, like, he wrote the first one. He's also writing this one. <laughs> exactly. I've Why never, I've never seen that on one that's like <laughs> yeah, the the same. <laughs> but yeah, lots of interesting that's, stuff. That's that's Scream Two. That's, that's scream all two. you need to know. 
Those are all of the interesting <laughs> that's facts. All, that's literally everything, guys. Nothing else happened in the production. You can go back home. <laughs> you can turn off the pod. There's nothing else. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Turn it off. We're an informative podcast, and you've been informed. Micah, what if we did something else? You know. Now go tell the people. <laughs> what if we did? What if we did a thing where we told them what we think of the movie? Spread the what? That's no. instead of no. just no. listening. No, facts what is this? About what is this blasphemy? <laughs> we have to spread the good news. <laughs> we have to. We have to reach as many people about as possible. who wrote Scream. We can't. We can't. We can't focus on any any opinions. That's that's blasphemy. <laughs> blasphemy. We must spread the the basic facts. <laughs> blasphemy against what, Micah? The basic facts. <laughs> <laughs> wow <laughs> all right yeah let's get into what we thought of it ladies and gentlemen as you sink comfortably into your beds as the cool crisp autumn night glows outside in the moonlight uh listen to our opinions as you lull off into sweet slumber <laughs> sweet slumber <laughs> Let's talk about a movie about a, another serial killer. <laughs> serial killer horror comedy. Yeah, baby. It's good time. So, so Robbie, yeah. inform me. Help me recall. <laughs> Help me to recollect. Me to recollect. Um, what are your thoughts on the hit movie Scream 2? Hit movie. I guess this was a hit too, probably. I would assume. I, I, I mean, Scream, I, I Scream was a big, I big success. I mean, let's see those box office numbers, <laughs> but tell us while I check. All right, all right. Um, Scream 2. Big fan of Scream. Uh, I liked Scream 2 a lot as well, if you could even believe it. Um, Kevin Williamson's screenplay is still really fun here. It's It lacks a little bit of the weight and wit of the first one, and the, I think the ensemble's a bit weaker. Um, but I think it is also really well paced and it's a lot of fun. I, I like it a lot. It's, it's a good time. Its budget was 24 million and opening weekend it did 32 million, but now worldwide gross, it has done 172 million. Not too shabby. Which, I guess, is, I mean, which is good profit. Yeah. So sure. yeah, I guess you could say it did well. <laughs> I, guess, I guess so. <laughs> it did well enough to get three made. Right. Um, but yeah. I think it's good. I think it's fun. I think, I, it's good. I think it's fun. I like that the fact that uh, Dewey gets a little more focus in this one. Dewey. And I, I like the new ensemble. Like I said, I think it's the, a little weaker. The Dewey decimals. But I, I do like the new ensemble for this one. So. Oh, see, it's not the it's not the fact that the ensemble is weaker. It's <laughs> that the writing of the ensemble is weaker. But we'll get into That's that true. later. That's true. <laughs> but yes, I liked it. I enjoy it a lot. And I I don't know for some reason I have a really tough time articulating how i feel about this movie or even land i had a really tough time landing on a star rating for it too a star well what was your star rating? my star rating the one i landed on was a four and a half out of five we should start calling our star ratings the star lasso experience, star lasso experience. would be pretty good it's the wrong movie Mike. <laughs> yeah but just for the whole podcast play a little play a little jupe theme a little jupe theme <laughs> that would be pretty good uh what, yeah no, four and a half? yeah it's a good time I, that, I would isn't, recommend. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, you'd think with like a rating like a four and a half that you that I would have like a concrete reason like, <laughs> oh yeah, no, it rocks, it rules, but there's like a couple things holding it back, but I don't know. What, what did you think of Scream What did I think of Scream 2? Thank you for asking. That, You're welcome. That really touches me. <laughs> it really, touches me. <laughs> really reaches deep into my soul. Uh, uh, and uh, What did I think of I think Scream 2 is a really fun movie. I think it is a it fine is. movie. I think it is a, a pretty decent movie by horror movie standards. Like Dang. this is this is like no, I'm saying like uh, compared to a lot of horror movies yeah, I've yeah. seen, this is like this is good. Yeah, definitely. Um, this is great even. Uh, but compared to Scream, <laughs> right? That's a hard act I think to follow. That's why my brain is breaking. I'm <laughs> trying to compare this to Scream. It's a hard act to follow, <laughs> and it's still very good. But nothing about it has the same teeth of of scream it's not as it's not as interesting it's not as insightful it's not yeah. as well thought out it doesn't have this in depth of characters it doesn't have as good of a twist it doesn't have as good as action gore horror it's just not the same level of it's no stuff, it's no scream <laughs> which is which is which is fine i have no problems with right. that but one thing that does bother me with that specifically is that they mention the fact that it's a sequel so much like it retroactively right. needs to be a like a good sequel by their standards um, and, and do stuff to improve on Scream. 
um, which is interesting. But yeah, I really like the cast. They're still giving darn good performances. Mm-hmm. The pacing is somehow still fantastic, which is, is very good. A big problem with a lot of horror movies, right? Um, and it's you know it's it's funny. It's fun. It's a lot more lighthearted and enjoyable. This is one you could turn on and laugh with your friends the whole way through. Exactly. You're not going to be scared, but it's going to be there. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I gave it a four out of five. This one is a lot more popcorny than scream is very popcorn which i i don't know if that's like on purpose well, no. i would assume it i is. mean yeah there are elements of it that i think definitely are on purpose of being that popcorny as it like is yeah. retroactively dealing with the fact that it's a movie like that scream was yeah. a movie that stab exists um and i think that definitely plays into how they went with the writing but I wouldn't inherently say that that makes it work. 100%. Yeah, yeah. It's a strange. It's a strange movie. But uh, Robbie of the yes. of the movie opinions. Yes, movie opinions. Movie I do opinion, have them. Robbie. Uh, that's what we call. <laughs> that's what they call me around the office. <laughs> do you have an opening question for us? Um. Sure. Yeah. Uh, since we mentioned Stab so often, uh, what do you think of the inclusion of Stab? It's a really, I like, fun meta-narrative choice, and I think it makes for an interesting, like, way to open the movie. So I think... And it frames a lot of, like, the main I was about to say, I think Stab... In a very I think, interesting way. I think Stab is going to be interesting to talk about, because it delves deep into some of the core problems that yeah. I think this movie has. Uh, because I like Stab. It's a great bit. It's really <laughs> it's funny. Bit, I love yeah. Stab. Um, but you know, they put stab up there and then kind of, kind of frame the movie more through movies, like even more so than the first one, which again, you could say a pretty general (laughs) read of that is people dealing with trauma through movies. Yes. And this one is kind of like people dealing with the trauma of movies. (laughs) Yeah. That's interesting. Um, I don't know. But in in a way, like the, the trauma of fame and everything like that, that comes with a story like Sydney has. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, and they kind of, and they kind of put it up there. And one of the things I wanted to specifically mention was the, um, what is his name? Mickey and Randy thing. Yes. Which I think plays into that. Cause again, it's very movie. And I like that we have this thing that's getting us into it in a little bit lighter tone, which stab is like a much lighter tone to open our movie for. <laughs> right. Think plays... about the cold open from screen. That's <laughs> intense stuff. Man. Yeah. But it plays into a lot of the themes that the movie is going for. But by the second half, once Randy spoilers dies, <laughs> um, it kind of loses the air of movies. Even, even the plot thread of what Mickey was going for, he just gets killed off and, like they just drop yeah. movies as an idea, even though, again, like you said, it well not on the podcast, but like you were saying before, <laughs> um, the opening and the closing parallel each other by being on stage. And again, the entire movie is kind of about presentation and like, yeah. I don't know. And like, you know, media, I think is my, my personal read of it is how the media and how entertainment inter- affects us through trauma. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, like, I don't really see what that has to do with Billy's mom. Yeah. No, I was, <laughs> when you mentioned that, like about how they kind of drop Mickey's thing, I think I almost would prefer it to just be Mickey. I would this. love for it to just be Mickey. And just totally explore his idea and his angle. Because on Because again, they focus more on Randy in this one and they get, and they literally have a film class in it <laughs> right? and they have two, he is a film student. He is also a film student. They have opposing beliefs on film. Mm-hmm. Uh, one that the movie clearly endorses as right and one that the movie endorses as wrong so that's like that i feel like that should be the core of the movie and it feels like it's it's playing to that yeah. because again the stab stuff the opening everything about it is much more popcorny everything about it is much more entertainment value yeah it's more sanitized it's more like like the killing is significantly less like the gore is not there the terror isn't there it's popcorn yeah um, and, you no know, it's very interesting because it's like thinking back on it now a lot of my criticisms of this movie, like the stuff that I find myself getting bored with or, you know, stuff that I just generally didn't enjoy as much, um, all boils down to like plot, like plot stuff, quote unquote, but like the stuff to do with Sydney and all of that. Like I wish I, I mentioned this earlier, I assumed Scream 2 would be like a disconnected 
uh, kind of sequel where it's in the same universe like Scream exists like the events of Scream took place obviously but it's yeah. like a completely different cast of characters that's what I assumed it would be and I kind of almost wish it was that yeah, so it, was it could explore the idea that we just talked well, about well honestly I wish I wish depth. that that Randy was just the main character Randy because um, <laughs> listen character. I love Sydney as a main character and I think it I she's think, good I think I'll give credit to this movie I think it does a really fantastic job of carrying over believable character arcs from the first it movie it does yeah like I think, I think sure. it, which is a feat it very <laughs> naturally brings over even Sydney and how she's doing I was about to say it, even with Dewey it feels like a very natural continuation of yeah. the first movie but at the same time I think Sydney outside of the cotton weary stuff which i think is really important to mm -hmm. the themes of the movie yeah shouldn't be like i think sydney should be side character at this point because she just doesn't have much to say like she went through essentially the media messing with her life entertain not entertainment even but the media affecting yeah. her life in the first movie she had to put up with that after cotton weary and everything and gail and yeah all of that. that's like the whole thing and yeah. in this one she's just that but more yeah. Like, she's just running into more of that. So she's even colder to it. And it's affecting her even worse. And, like, she's gone through a lot. And she's in a really terrible position in the movie, which is fine. Like, that's good. Again, more conflict for her to grow through. But at the same time, the conclusion doesn't... There's no conclusion for her character. They don't give her... And, and, and I'll say this, too, because um, I thought this was interesting. I noticed yeah. this on our second watch. Um it's her trust issues that not uh, directly, but indirectly get her boyfriend killed. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like her trust issues are completely valid throughout the entire movie. <laughs> right. Um, so, like, what is it trying to say? Like, what is Sydney's character in the movie trying to say to us? Because, like, you know, I wouldn't read into it that much, but Scream, as a kind of meta franchise, mm -hmm. specifically asks the audience to read into what's happening. Exactly, yeah. It, it, that, I think maybe that is what bothers me so much about this movie, because I, I really do enjoy it, and I think it's fantastic, but it, it something just kind of, like, sits in the back of my brain, like, it, it's not what it could be. And it really bothers me, but I think that is part of the reason was, why Sydney's say, arc in this just doesn't. It, it does feel like a natural continuation, but it doesn't really get the resolution that it needs. Well, I feel this. like I feel like the movie's kind of split because it's doing the two killer thing. Because you have yeah. Cotton Weary, Billy's mom, Sydney, her boyfriend, <laughs> college life. All of that can kind of be wrapped up into one movie. Yeah. All of the stuff that it's exploring. If it really wants to go more down, how this has personally emotionally relationshiply affected her mm -hmm. um because the because they entered they introduce that they introduce that as like her friend is like you've you're so shut down you're so cut off you yeah need to get better with that's that. the first thing we see but the Sydney movie literally offers nothing no solution <laughs> for that yeah it is um, interesting <laughs> and, and and then her boyfriend ends up getting killed <laughs> right um and then you have randy and stab and you've got your movie class stuff and you've got Mickey who plays into that stuff more. And the themes have like if you had a little, one of those little circle <laughs> charts, they, they have a they have a little cross. They intersect, yeah. The 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 media emotionally affecting you and entertainment value uh, like traumatically affecting like a tr media and entertainment leading had dealing with trauma mm -hmm. those things cross over and what the moral implications are of something like stab. Yeah. I think that's a very interesting conversation and they kind of cross over <laughs> but in a move in this movie neither of them are really given the chance to resolve they kind of kill each other <laughs> yeah no that's a good that's a good way to put it they kind of both diffuse each other's momentum as narrative plot lines you know because again mickey gets well and randy ideas. randy gets killed off by the mom yeah mickey gets killed off by the mom <laughs> um you know yeah. The boyfriend gets killed off by Mickey. <laughs> they literally kill each other. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> um, but yeah, that's why I said that's an interesting opening question for you, because that yeah. opened the can of worms that I think leads to like one of the deepest problems of the movie. Yeah. Um, so I will ask a question because I also want to, because I think that's, you know, that's an interesting thing. I think that yeah. is that is honestly a lot of it's what... A, I don't know. It strikes me as a very telling, like a very central element to this movie is stab like as a thematic idea yeah because like we'll, we'll take a again a look at the first movie the first movie is something really special like beyond like like it's it's a 
It's amazing. <laughs> and what it captures is something that's very difficult to reproduce. It's so hard a to sequel, reproduce. A sequel was, would be troubled to do so <laughs> in any circumstance. And I think it does a fantastic job of being a sequel to Scream. I was about to say, this is a great like, um, result of a sequel to Scream. Much better than I would but expect. But Scream, <laughs> your opening initially, immediately sets the tone of slight comedy, slight parody, a lot of terror. Yeah. And it carries that. It's, it carries that on its back it's so scary the whole the way. It is. It, it carries weight. It, you feel mm-hmm. every kill. You feel every stab. Even the sound design in Scream 2 is less. Like, you hear the stabs and, and the guttings in Scream. Um, and yeah. it carries that the entire way to its one central theme. It has one theme, one main character, and it follows that like a bullet. Um, and it's great, man. <laughs> and it works. In Scream 2... I understand the idea of wanting to get more, get more in there, which is, again, why I think Randy just would have been a better main character. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting thought. <laughs> and so so Scream 2 is just kind of split and tearing itself apart, despite the fact... <laughs> dis- and 2. Well. Despite the fact that it, it does have really good, like, re- some really solid ideas of how to thematically carry a sequel to Scream. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I think Kevin Williamson, I like, I keep bringing him up. <laughs> I, like I Kevin keep finding Williamson. that I'm a big fan of his, uh, like, screenwriting style. Have you heard of Kevin Williamson? <laughs> but, like, um, stuff like I Know What You Did Last Summer, and, I mean, obviously, Scream, um, they're just so coherent, like, and, and they feel so complete. And this doesn't feel totally complete, which is, I don't know, it it really bothers me deep down. I again, don't again, I don't think it's even that like, yeah, that big of a not inherently problem. I don't think it's that big of a thing. Yeah, if it weren't for the fact that again, not only does this movie literally essentially tell you as an audience to read into the film more, but it also tells you to read into it as a sequel more. Mm-hmm. It specifically tells you that. Like like things about sequels, it it sets up an entire theme about sequels. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very interesting too because the the like angle that they take on investigating the new string of murders it is like they keep framing it as a sequel to the first one, which I find is very interesting phrasing. But like also a lot of the plot stuff that they introduce when they're initially like gathering evidence, like the name thing and everything doesn't really come back up again which, I, was, I was about to say which I, bothered me a little this time i, I was, was like oh i was about to say it's the kind of writing for that stuff mm-hmm. that makes sense on a first viewing because it's a mystery but i don't think that makes for a well-written mystery because it ultimately is just a bunch of weird like it's there for a reason they did it specifically again mickey was doing it similar to the movie specifically for his little plan yeah for his plan. but because the the mom wasn't even she didn't even care about the plan she just kills him again it makes that feel a lot less it feels cheap relevant yeah Yeah. cheap it feels a lot more like wow we just threw this on here to give intrigue and mystery and to be like oh it's a sequel um yeah i don't know which again it's not like an egregious offense but it's just little things like that that bother me about this movie and again, I still gave it like I still gave it a nine. No, I was about to say I wanted to ask a question <laughs> yeah, and like yeah. start diving into what's good mm-hmm. about it. Yeah, um, because I think there's a lot that's really fantastic in it. Absolutely. Um, so I don't know if you heard that vibration. <laughs> and my foot is stuck. Um, but what do you th- <laughs> what do you think of like our ensemble here? What do you think the of ensemble. our cast? I think it has a big. Uh, Matthew Lillard shaped hole in it <laughs> and it makes a me Matthew very sad Matthew Lillard shaped hole in our heart <laughs> he is so good at the scream it makes me so I sad I was about to say in general the kind of spitball energy that scream has the kind of off the walls really fast goes like just feels so it, the immersive first, the first scream ensemble is like crackling with energy and this one is not. About, it's still say, very good. I was about to say is but because it's a whole different vibe. Is because you have this weird, <laughs> crazy, insane, crazy chemistry, crazy conflict friend group that it's based on, like that, that you follow. Yeah. There's like no reason for them to be friends, but the actors have such insane charisma <laughs> and chemistry <laughs> that you're just like, yeah. Yeah, of course. This <laughs> is a group of friends. <laughs> um, and Matthew Lillard obviously greatly contributes to that. Um, 
But yeah, man, I don't know. Like, by conventional standards, the Scream 2 ensemble is pretty great. Like, um, I like a lot of the new additions. Um, Sarah Michelle Gellar, I wish she was in this more. Right. I'm going to blow your mind with this, though, Robbie. Mm. I'm going to blow your mind with this. All right. The Scream 2 cast, the Scream 2 ensemble, uh-huh. could be that good if it wasn't split <laughs> and trying to do multiple things with them. They never focus on it as an ensemble of a group of people because they instantly have to all be pulled apart to do their separate little bits. That's true. Mickey is gone for 90% of the movie, which sucks. I want right? more Mickey. Um <laughs> No, he's so much fun. The Dewey and Gale stuff is fantastic. It's great. Um, I love it, how they're almost like second main characters. Yeah, I was about this. to say they're I love um, their they're, stuff. they're a great B plot. <laughs> they're the, probably yeah. the best thing going on in this movie, honestly. Um, <laughs> right. I love like seriously, and that's a big compliment. <laughs> like they're really great. Yeah. Um, but like Sydney and her friends, it's like eh, mm-hmm. you got the boyfriend, and that's like a thing. And, like, does she suspect? And then there's Cotton Weary, and he's over here doing his thing. Yeah. And Cotton Weary kind of connects to Gale. Gale Cotton kind of connects to Dewey. Too. Dewey kind of connects. It's it's this weird... <laughs> it's it, a very odd movie. It feels like the ensemble, <laughs> instead of being a group together, is actively avoiding each other, all for different reasons. Yeah. No, it's it's interesting. But I will say the guy who plays Cotton in this, I didn't, I didn't double check on his name, but he's very good. No, the performances, I love <laughs> yeah. the performances of the ensemble. I love even, Mickey even in this. Uh, is it Joel or Joey? I don't remember um, the camera guy. The camera guy. Oh yeah, what is his name? It's something with a J. It's like Joel or Joey. Liv Schreiber is Schreiber. the guy who played Cotton Weary. Very cool. <laughs> he's a good actor. <laughs> Joel, yeah, it's Joel. Joel. Okay. Um. Like, Joel, I really like him, but again, he's not in the movie much. Um, Randy's performance is, like, off the walls here, probably even better than the first one, which is, like... I was about to say, I really <laughs> like the energy he brings to this one. He's very and good. And again, <laughs> then, then they kill him. I, I was, okay, it didn't bother me that much the first time, but, like, watching it again... It really, like, made me kind of mad and a little sad that they killed off Randy so soon in this one. Because they could have done so many more, like, fun bits. Well, I think and, it's, again, I think it's yeah. sloppy placement because they specifically set up Randy and Mickey. Yeah. Again, Randy should have been the main character here. I, I kind of wish they would have killed him off in that, like, final stage encounter in everything. Like, have... Um, him and Sydney meet back up right before Mickey reveals himself to be the killer. That would have yeah, been fun. Like, and have him die there. Yeah, instead. just have him more towards the end. But instead, he feels like a filler kill. Yeah. He, he's like, his kill is like... Yeah, they're just... I mean, they are do they kill him to ramp up the stakes. And really, that's about it. Yeah, I mean, same with same with Dewey's attack. Which, again, is another one of the things. Like, uh, you know, do, uh, Dewey, Randy. Randy <laughs> specifically mentions in this movie, in that conversation with Dewey, that sequels <laughs> ramp it up. There are more, more killings, more gore, more everything. I like, think Scream ha- might have a higher body count. Than I, this. I, I, I'm trying to think, <laughs> I feel but like I think it, it does. does. Um, but, and significantly more gore. But what I was yeah. going to say specifically about the killings in Scream mm-hmm. is because it has a much more sinister vibe again curated by its opening yeah um and yeah. the actual real stakes you feel for sydney and everything um like because you feel like she could die off at any minute right. whereas this movie i really don't feel like she could die off anytime <laughs> she she um, is she shows herself to be very capable in this movie. <laughs> uh, and um like every kill you feel every kill beyond even just the gore and the sound design which is a lot more punchy um like for the stakes of the movie the very small set of cast starts to dwindle um, yeah and it's given each kill even like the camera guy is given like a lot of weight a lot of terror yeah. a lot of like oh my gosh this guy is going to come for me next <laughs> he is dying um whereas this they're literally like like i guess it's the way they treat the killing in this even uh-huh. like even the way sydney and the boyfriend treat killing like people get murdered and then people around Sydney start getting murdered. Yeah. And everybody's just like, yeah, whatever. Do you have to have these bodyguards around you? <laughs> right. <laughs> Cotton Weary is like, yeah, can you come on this show right now? Can we do this right now? Right. Um, like, <laughs> Gail even. Like, everything just feels like it doesn't care about the the slasher element of the slasher. 
That is an, yeah, that's an interesting way to put it. You know, I, I will say I was a little like, I, I wouldn't say upset. I was a little sad to see that Gail was back. I like, like Gail in this. No, no, I like her in this. Like when we first started it and I realized that it, Gail was going to be like a main character, I was like, oh no. Because <laughs> like she she's good in the first movie. I think she's a great like element especially. But I've always seen her as more of a like plot tool in the first one. Yeah, she's an antagonistic yeah. tool to add to Sydney's just build up of and they give her they give her a lot more character in this one which i like um but i don't know something about her still irritates me (laughs) (laughs) and like deep down i'm like i don't know i don't know i was gonna say because i love gail and dewey stuff yeah no her stuff in this is very good um i just think i think it's an interesting phenomenon that like she still bothers me (laughs) as a person (laughs) i think it's well i mean there there could be an argument made to the fact that like she seems to flip-flop with her character yeah her like her morality check um (laughs) Because, like, again, she made this book, and she really does not seem too torn up about the fact that she, like, slandered all of these people in her book. Um, (laughs) And, like, she still seems very, very concerned about, like, you know, her interviews and her fame. Mm -hmm. And then Dewey. And then Dewey pops in. Which, again, Dewey, like, Dewey, like, smokes her, man. He he chews her out really good, and she cares about Dewey. So, like, it makes sense, but it also feels, like, just specifically not given enough oomph to really feel like it means as much because again gail and dewey don't really effectively mean much to the movie unfortunately yeah like they're a fun b plot but i think i don't know they're given either too much time or not enough time they're like they're like a family guy b plot (laughs) and the fact that like really they only cross over in one little element at the end yeah it's interesting (laughs) But yeah, no, it's, I don't know. There's lots of very interesting tidbits when it comes to, like, dissecting how this movie goes about telling its story. Brian's tracking down the killer, and then all of a sudden, (laughs) boom, Quagmire has walked in (laughs) through the stage, and they're like, what, Quagmire, for five seconds, and then it turns out it's it's some random side character's mom. Nice. (laughs) (laughs) I'd watch that. There you go. They, instead of doing the Star Wars movies, Family Guy should have done parodies of the Scream movies. They would have rocked. <laughs> uh, I think, I, I'm not sure. See, that'd be very different themed, though, because, you right. know, all of Star Wars is pretty popcorn-y. Yeah. But, like, the first one is a lot different than the second one in tone <laughs> for right. Scream. Yeah, no. It'd be fun, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stand by that. Seth MacFarlane who, hire me. <laughs> who would who would be Stu and Billy? Stu and Billy. I mean, I guess you'd have to have Stewie as Stu, you know. Stewie as yeah, that would be good. <laughs> Billy, you could either do Chris or you could do um who else could you do? I mean you could do You'd have to be no, I'd say do somebody outside of the family yeah. because you'd want them to date um I'd say you'd want them to date um why did I just lose her name? The daughter. Meg? Meg. <laughs> Unless you gender swap the main character and make it yeah. somebody like Brian or something and have it as a female to be the assistant Man, killer. I can't think of someone good to play him. But anyway, anyway. <laughs> We're way off base. <laughs> the family guy extended canon of characters does not matter in the discussion of Scream 2. <laughs> but Robbie, imagine... Imagine, uh, dang it, I'm losing all of my Family Guy character names. Who are you thinking of? Uh, Patrick Warburton. Oh, character. Joe. Joe. Imagine <laughs> Joe being Dewey. <laughs> that would be funny. I'd watch that. Um, but anyway, do you have another question? Do I have to lead question? us towards again elements specifically that we like? Because I feel like we've we've done a good job of kind of cutting to the, the stuff that does not cutting work. to the oh my god stabbing, stabbing if you will. <laughs> um, what do you think of the uh, direction in this one? Like the just the general energy, how the cast operates. You know, it's you know I really like the I, I, like again I really like the tone they're going for here. I like the direction. I yeah. love the pacing. Like it feels like the a pacing, really man. It feels like you a really pacing enough it feels like a really nice like movie like it feels i like the scenes i like everything about it really on a like a direction production level 
Um, I really like the sets. I love the location of the college. I think they do a really good job with it. The setting, yeah, the college setting does work really well. It's not as spooky as those locations around Westboro for um, Scream, but again, this is a much less spooky movie, so I think the college campus works really well. I like the sorority stuff and like the (laughs) fraternity house stuff. No, those are fun. That's cool. Those are those are like some of the most fun elements in this. Like if it's we're talking like non main plot stuff, like the sorority and fraternity stuff is a fun element to introduce in the, this movie. the camera doesn't feel as alive in this one i will say though the camera feels a lot more stiff it does um, this one feels a lot more tv showy in the way yeah, it's shot you which get, is a shame again you don't get that kind of manic vibe from that you got from scream with all of its wides and I saw, close-ups and... i saw silent dawn um on letterbox praising the cinematography in this one actually but i mean they're they were I mean, a big I, fan of like the sort of shift in style to in this one yeah, being a little to, less. I was scary. about to say it adjusts to fit the. Yeah, tone I was of about the movie. to say it. It it, we, it it is not as like manic and scary as the first one, but like that's by design. I was about to say you don't have Matthew Lillard giving you that chaotic <laughs> manic energy, <laughs> right? I was about to say no, like like legitimately though, there's a lot of elements you do not curate the same vibe because honestly, a big vibe in Scream is kind of like like mania essentially. Yeah, it is. Yeah, um, and that's just not present here really at all <laughs> right no it, it feels a lot more tame which is part of again the reason i don't think mickey works as a character mm-hmm. in the movie he, he very much brings that energy <laughs> he's 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 uh, he's being manic in a not manic energy <laughs> movie so he's over here like ah, he seems out of place the movies, at the end honestly. the sequels right and you're like that's nice billy but but the i mean not billy uh that's nice Mickey, but Randy's not here to to riff off of this energy with you. He was the only one giving that energy in return. Yeah. No, um, it's a shame. I would have, I would have, I would love to see the version of Scream Two that just focuses on like Mickey as a character yeah. and Randy. Okay, and okay. Tell me this would be pretty <laughs> sick though. Tell me. I know everybody loves Sydney. <laughs> Sydney's fantastic. I know everyone loves Dewey. Dewey is like my favorite Dewey character. Rocks, dude. And you could even have Dewey appear here. Um, <laughs> but I'm just saying, picture this. Open your minds to this concept <laughs> of we we open the same opening stab. Um, but yeah. maybe you had maybe even throw in the fact that like Randy might have been at the stab opening. That mm-hmm. seems like, or or at least Mickey. Somebody, uh, yeah, Mickey. Mickey, he is there, right? Well, Does he, he technically, the he's first... the, yeah, he's the first killer. Yeah, I would, killer. I would guarantee. I would assume um, <laughs> from from the stature, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like, so yeah, but like you know, showing mm-hmm. Mickey there not as the killer, yes. specifically just showing setting up them as movie people having different opinions on the movies <laughs> and then kind of following through in a in a in an almost Donnie Darko-esque screenplay style of like exploring kind of even both of them I guess that's not Donnie but I'm saying like specifically like exploring kind of the path of academia affecting like his mania essentially interesting <laughs> <laughs> so funny right um but yeah no i mean i like i said i feel like that's what i was hoping scream 2 was gonna be was like something a little disconnected and having randy is like the side he character would have be been so good. good lead he would have been such a good lead but yeah no. they, they even are like you'll never be main you'll never be lead man and i'm like but he could be he could be especially, imagine how great especially that in this he's just he's he's a much more compelling and interesting character in this than he's the first scream character whereas in scream he was kind of like he was funny yeah he was a little bit of a creep <laughs> to where you know you you could kind of suspect randy you yeah. know but you know he's still fun yeah uh, that's really all he has in scream um, which is the perfect character I was to focus to say, on in a sequel. Dude, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we we can't criticize a movie for what it's not, Micah. No, I'm saying picture it. <laughs> just picture it. Just imagine it. Just imagine will. it. Imagine that world. I think that would be a good world. <laughs> it would be. I would I would be so happy. I would be like this this is beautiful. Yeah, but do you have any specific comments on the direction since the we were, direction. that's what we were technically talking about? I think, you know, this is my, I guess, second Wes Craven movie, and I am really loving the, like, power he has, you know? Like, he's a very solid director, and that's that's something I really admire, you know? I I feel like all of my directors have a very... All of my favorite directors have a... All of my directors. All of my directors. All of my directors. <laughs> I don't know about your directors. All my favorite directors have a very 
like set in stone, like they know what they're doing. And Wes Craven has always struck me as uh, someone who knows what he's doing. Yeah. Um, behind the camera, you know, he he does a very good job directing this cast. I can't this. wait. I can't wait to watch a Nightmare on Elm Street. Ah oh, man, I I have a feeling I'm gonna love it just as much as Scream, but I'm I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he directed Scream 3 and 4, I mean. Yeah, I don't know. I, this will be very interesting. I, this has me very excited for Scream 3, because I saw someone mention, someone I follow on Letterboxd, they mentioned in their review that Scream 2 is a great springboard into the greatness of 3. So, I, I don't know. I'm holding my breath that I'm going to love uh, 3 more than this one. Um, which sounds, again, sounds crazy because I gave this a four and a half. <laughs> no, again, and, and again, for anybody who doesn't know <laughs> how essentially I usually go about talking <laughs> about movies on here is I try specifically to bring about a foil just to, to kind of dive into the things like, cause I think talking about what I think doesn't work can highlight what does work. Yeah. And I think this movie is really, really fun. Just about everything it else It masters works. its tone. It yeah. masters its pacing. Its cast is great. It's it's a really fun time. But I also think it deserves mentioning the criticisms of it because yeah. they're, they're the reasons that I didn't give it quite that extra bit. But I need to go off of my rating <laughs> with the criticism in mind, you know? Like, I really like this movie. Mm -hmm. I would turn this on any time. In fact, it's, it's a lot a, It's a, great it's a lot time, easier man. to turn on than Scream because, again, Scream, like, Scream requires your focus. <laughs> it demands your attention. This one, again, is like a, a really fun popcorn movie. It's a fun movie. romp, yeah. This would be great to watch on, like, Halloween with a bunch of friends. Yeah. Um... And I think it's fantastic for that. I think it's a great yeah. direction to take the sequel. I just think it was a little muddled in doing so. Yeah, it's a bit it's a bit of a muddy screenplay, which you know, I say I say that and then I keep praising Kevin Williamson's writing. But like, I don't know, the the style the, the way he curates tone in his writing is very interesting to me. Because he, he dances this really fine line. And I mean, obviously, Wes Craven is a great director here, too. Like, and that's obviously... Man, if, if, I'm, if I know what you did last summer was paired with uh, <laughs> with Wes Craven, I know it right? would, I know it would oh be, like, goodness. perfect. It would be so good. But, like, he has such a uh, gripping way, uh, such an interesting and, like... I, I don't know. I have a hard time looking away from anything he writes. Because everything he does feels so intentional. No, he has really fantastic yeah. ideas, and I yeah. think again, he has, he's I, a great one idea. Reason, one of the reasons I want to do, I really want to do a video on "I Know What You Did Last Summer" yeah. because it's a really, it's actually kind of similar to criticism I have for this because I think "I Know What You Did Last Summer" is a really smart screenplay. They're very similar in quality. That is actually, very that is very muddled and dumbed down. Yeah, um, <laughs> which is a shame, and because and it, and it's more apparent in "I Know What You Did Last Summer" because it's a solo movie mm -hmm. whereas this is a sequel this is very much um, uh, so it can easily, accented by i was scream. about to say it can easily grab off of a lot of the really good rich stuff presented in scream where yeah. i know what you did last summer couldn't um but i think it's really like i love his writing style i really do i think he has a lot of interesting things he's to got say such a great voice with, with horror yeah. with especially that kind of teenage college age right he writes um, that so well friend group and dynamics so entertaining. are so good yeah <laughs> i love the way he writes that um it's it's interesting Ruby. he didn't write three he wrote four but he oh, didn't watch he, okay. he didn't write scream three that's very interesting <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> I was about to say, I know a lot of people who scream three and four, like, they consider to just be bad. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, wow, now, now I'm interested. You know, I mean, I was interested before, obviously. No, I'm very excited <laughs> to see where this the series goes. Yeah. But yeah, Scream 2, very interesting movie overall. Is my, is it really, that's my assessment of it. It's a very interesting, very fun movie. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's really fun i think it's funny i think it's exciting i think it's got a fun mystery even though it's not like the best mystery you've ever yeah. seen um it's got a really fun continuation of the cast it's really <laughs> it looks good it sounds good the soundtrack i would say is even better than scream Ooh, i um, don't i don't know if i'd go that far it is good though for I sure think, i think the soundtrack <laughs> is better than scream um I think it, it does it presents a lot of really really cool ideas as a sequel Absolutely. as a sequel and theming 
Um, it, it gives me a lot to chew on. And at the end of the day, you know, like that's that's what I go to movies for, you know? <laughs> you don't go to the movies to have fun, right? I go to the movies <laughs> to have fun and then chew on the fun. I was about to say, this is fun. So. <laughs> it is fun. I will say Dewey might be the MVP of this Dewey movie. is the MVP. <laughs> Dewey is out there doing the most. Randy would be the MVP if he had more focus. Mickey could be an MVP if he had more focus. Shout out to uh, Luke Wilson as Billy and Snap. Luke Wilson as Billy. <laughs> and stab is amazing his hair looks so bad on him (laughs) i want to watch i wish that i wish there was like a full cut of stab i would watch you wish it was like a man situation where there's like at least like an assembly cut yeah Yeah. (laughs) because like which by the way again we mentioned this and now you bring it up again i thought it would be an interesting mention on the podcast uh but uh matinee matinee um joe dante picture joe dante mat matinee with uh john goodman actually very explores good a lot of similar themes yes, to this in a very different way but still revolving around horror movies on a technical level just like 60s horror movies i was about to say if you enjoy scream 2 i would definitely go check out matinee because it examines uh like terror on screen and just movie making in general in a very yeah, interesting way. I was about to light. say in the way that it presents gimmicks, the way mm-hmm. it presents what horror is actually doing as a genre. Yeah, um, which I mean, it, it examines that through the lens of uh, nuclear war and creature features, which yeah, is was, very cool. I was about to say it's much different <laughs> yeah. than this. It's a much more tonal comedy. It's not a horror movie in any <laughs> right. in any sense at all. <laughs> um, but it is very it is very cool and i think it thematically pairs really well with this Mm -hmm. if you if you enjoy the themes and the interesting like discussion that this movie can bring about i would very much suggest matinee or even if you just enjoy the movies or john goodman or or giant anthropomorphic ants mant go watch matinee (laughs) is the is the takeaway (laughs) matinee is really great go watch scream 2 as well it's very fun it's it's Um, a good time man but I, I don't think I have too much more to add no, about really. Scream 2. I think that was a... Like, again, I think it's... What what is there works extremely well. Yeah. And it's it's really kind of... Again, as they talk about in the movie, as horror movie sequels go especially, it's, it's like, fantastic. It's yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, it just doesn't come anywhere near touching the original <laughs> and feels kind of muddled in comparison it is muddled which is a shame because that that's one of the big strengths of scream is how sharp and like focused it is and then this one a lot of fun just feels a lot yeah i was about to say it's sharp focus of scream is what makes it's we didn't we have no reason to do these killings (laughs) theme work so well right (laughs) Uh, man but instead what is the theme that the killings are trying to tell you in scream 2 what is it trying to say? I don't know, man. But it is fun to watch. <laughs> it is fun to watch. And maybe that's really what Scream 2 is all about. Maybe... I mean, that's the last line in the movie. The like entertainment it'll make we a great movie. Maybe the entertainment we watch doesn't need to mean anything. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it... If, if uh you know the the next netflix Dahmer uh series negatively affects the people's lives who have to deal with the stuff because it's good popcorn which i think is a terrible message and i don't think that's what the film is trying to say (laughs) go watch see how they run (laughs) no don't (laughs) see how they run that's a that is the biggest problem with that movie i think oh my gosh it's just laughs in the face of (laughs) the big moral question of the the moral ambiguity of uh, creating media. true crime yeah, entertainment true crime. oh man but yeah scream 2 great movie scream 2 great movie let's love the cast let's uh, talk about some of the other stuff we watched this week let's do it ladies and gentlemen now presenting the final segment of our podcast if you're not asleep at this point what are you doing you're not using this podcast correctly. Take a melatonin. Take some melatonin. Get some rest. <laughs> rest those rest those heavy eyes. Uh, for those of you who don't know or have never made it this far into the podcast before, the What We Watch segment is what we do at the end, where we just briefly talk about all of the movies that we've watched since our last episode. We just give a rating and then some quick little thoughts. Just, just, just for fun. So sit back, relax, close those eyes of yours. And let's talk about what we watched. All right, so we're going from the oh, the, tenth, the tenth. Well, I guess, yeah. Um, 
But yes, the tenth uh, of October, twenty twenty two. Whom shall start? Because we Who watched different things on the tenth. We wa- we we did not watch a lot together. This we did not, week. which is why we have to be briefer right. with this, so we're going to be here for forever. Uh, I guess I'll kick it off. Okay. Um, on the tenth, I watched Claire's Knee, my first Eric Romer film. Um, very good stuff. Uh, it covers a similar topic to Lolita, which we touched on, uh, I think one or two episodes ago. Um, and it does so in, with a lot more class and panache, I will say, which, or panache, I guess. Panache. It's panache. panache. What is panache? panache. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you say panache and I was like, where's he going uh, with this? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, very good movie. Um, a, a surprisingly like meaningful exploration of love i don't know it's, it's a very cool movie i liked it a lot i want to see more of eric romer of work. love question mark. <laughs> question mark. i don't know it's it's a very brilliantly like written and directed film and cool. very well performed uh claire's knee Concerning. i gave it i gave it a four and a half concerning that the same man was in two pedophile movies yes <laughs> yeah right <laughs> raises some red flags uh on the 10th uh i watched Damien Chazelle's Woo! Whiplash. <laughs> I love me and, some Chazelle, and, man. And whoa, whoa. It's so good. Whoa. Uh, Damien Chazelle, uh, take my money. <laughs> take, my take all of it. Take I everything I've ever for earned. Babylon. Um, I cannot what the wait heck? for Babylon, dude. Like, I've, I loved First Man, <laughs> and I loved La La Land, but I this movie blows my mind. I've nonstop <laughs> thought about it since. This is probably one of the most tight screenplays i've ever seen some of the most insane direction some of the best character work like working together in a very tight level it's just so fun it's and so it's good. so endearing and it's so engaging it's it's crazy that finale man and what it does with music <laughs> is finale. is fantastic this is this is the perfect example of damien chazelle the musician director you know yeah i mean <laughs> this is probably my favorite damien chazelle movie now, oh it's easily my favorite um, which is crazy is. because la la land is a freaking masterpiece. no it's insane because la la land was my favorite movie for the longest time and then i watched like a bunch of other stuff but then i watched whiplash and like it blew me out of the water dude I, like miles teller in this fantastic <laughs> jk simmons scary <laughs> Dude. This is crazy. I loved it so much. Uh, I gave it a five out of five. One of the best of the decade. One of the best of the decade. Easily. Easily. <laughs> uh, then, uh, what did we watch, Revy? What did we watch together? Then we watched Straight Out of Nowhere, Scooby Doo Meets Courage the Cowardly Dog, Boo. which is a very long title. Boo. It's I'm the, realizing. And pretty short is the longest Scooby Doo movie title. <laughs> Straight Out of Nowhere, Scooby Doo Meets um, Courage the Cowardly so, Dog. That's a lot of words. So, um, yeah, I've been, if you haven't been keeping up, I've been working on a keep up a video epi- up. <laughs> a video on my channel ranking all of the scooby-doo movies yeah so i watched all of the scooby-doo, all movies, of the scooby-doo movies including this one which i was not too jazzed about because i've never really been a courage fan courage it's he, weird it's they, a weird it show. has its moments it has its charms but it really one of my biggest problems with courage is that he talks why, why does he <laughs> why do does that he, he sounds really weird i don't like his voice at all <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind his voice, no, but I he shouldn't it. be talking. Robbie, I hate his voice. He sounds like, like a 40-year-old man doing a weird voice. He is a 40-year-old man doing a weird voice. <laughs> Which is not what I want my dog to sound like. <laughs> That's fair. See, Scooby sounds like a 40-year-old man doing a weird voice, and but like in a cool way. It's flirting versus harassment. <laughs> it's the flirting versus harassment of mystery <laughs> horror-based dog <laughs> characters <laughs> in cartoons. That's funny. But yeah, uh, but the movie. Scooby-Doo straight out of nowhere, it, it's not very it's good. It's fine. It's fine. I think it's fine. I, yeah, it's pretty mediocre to bad, I would say. Yeah. A lot of the elements really don't work well in it. It does a really it's bad job about crossing over all of its people oh, yeah, and handling its ensemble. It's a really terrible crossover. They needed to cut the cast way down. Again, I think this movie probably could have been pretty darn good if it was just Scooby and Shaggy or even Scrappy if they felt so inclined. That would have been going so into good. the going into the courage universe. Something even something like a uh, take for example, like Goblin King mm-hmm. is mainly just the two exactly. of them going into something a different like that universe. Would have worked so much uh, better with courage, but instead it's got way too big. <laughs> it's of a got cast. way too many. It's characters. got a really convoluted <laughs> plot. The yeah. mystery kind of sucks. It just is, is there a mystery? I guess there's a mystery. It just doesn't really. <laughs> It's mystery and like. A... Also, where was Lequack's mustache in this movie? Lequack is the easily the best part of. Courage. I was about to say he doesn't have his mustache. <laughs> and he doesn't have his mustache. It's weird, <laughs> uh, but I gave it a two and a half out of five. It's really just 
not that um, great. I give it a three out of five. It's not bad. It's not, but it's, it's not, not really. Terrible. It's not really all that good either. <laughs> uh, then on the eleventh, uh, I watched Crimson Peak for the first Crimson time. Peak. Guillermo del Toro's Crimson Peak. Big Del Toro fan. Uh, huge, Here huge Del Toro fan. One of my favorite directors. <laughs> Um, and I don't understand why people don't like this movie. Um, it's it's one of my favorite Del Toro movies. It's actually my mom's favorite Del Toro movie now, which is interesting. <laughs> not your mom's um, Del Toro. Not your mom's Del Toro. <laughs> uh, but I think it's a brilliant love letter to gothic literature and a really, really unique take on it. And it just feels so classical and fun. It's spooky. It's great. I, I find it. that that's uh, the best like elements of Del Toro's work. Same with Ryan Johnson, where it... Gothic very romance, much it feels like, like an homage to other stuff yeah um i gave Good it a stuff. four and a half out of five a fantastic picture fantastic picture you gotta love it then what did we watch remy later that day we watched punch drunk love paul thomas anderson's punch drunk love which happens to be my favorite movie <laughs> that's crazy because it's my least favorite pta movie now <laughs> uh don't get me wrong from that statement it's still really really good um Adam Sandler is oh insane in this. He's so good um, in this. And the charm that this movie has is really crazy. Like <laughs> it's crazily tangible, understated man. the charm that this movie has. It's so good. But it just doesn't really connect with me in any emotional way. I feel a lot for Barry as a character <laughs> and you know I relate to him in a lot of ways. Um cuz I yeah. think he's I think he's a really great delve into like neurodivergency on screen. Mm -hmm. Um I think like that's the best thing going on in this movie cuz I feel like the plot itself of the romance and everything never really drew me in in a <sighs> meaningful way. You got to you got to you got to buy into the romance like <laughs> <laughs> Well like uh, not even just the romance but the romance the the mattress man. It's a like, very like it's the a mattress very man, unconventional screenplay. But like it's yeah, I just never really get into it the same way I have any other PTA movie. Okay. That's fair, um, but I still but you're wrong. really, I still really love it. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I mean, it's my favorite movie. This is my fourth time watching it, which seems absurd. It feels like I've watched it like a million times, um, but uh, you know, it's great. I love it. Uh, Paul Thomas Anderson is, I think, probably one of the best modern directors, if not the best modern director. Um, I don't think there can be a best modern director. <laughs> he is one of the best. He is though. one of the best, easily, in my mind. Uh, but yeah, t uh, Punch Drunk Love, I gave it a 5 out of 5. I, I love it so much. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it's got so much charm. I can see it. Right. Oh my gosh, Scream 2, if you squint, the poster, the normal poster on Letterboxd, looks like Venom. The two, the two white faces look like Venom's eyes. Then oh the goodness. other faces look like a top row of teeth. And then you've got the two <laughs> it red does as look his like tongue. Venom. It right. looks like Venom. I changed mine to not have the ensemble on the poster. It looks like Venom, guys. That's crazy. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, anyway. Uh, on the 11th, yeah. I also watched um, Scooby-Doo meets Batman. Scooby-Doo meets Batman. Um, which uh, is one of the first Scooby-Doo quote-unquote movies. It's not really a movie, but it qualifies. Uh, <laughs> And it's really fun. It's classic Scooby. It looked it looked like a bunch of fun when I for like the few scenes I saw of it. After after watching <laughs> like literally like over forty other Scooby Doo movies, most of them being more modern, it's really nice to just kind of feel like you know classic Scooby Doo, especially also paired with classic Batman feeling. Like it feels like good cartoon fun Batman, um, which you don't get much of. Um, and it was just it's it's fun. It's not the greatest i don't think the villains do a really good job and i think the mysteries can be really boring um but it's fun it's very endearing but what it, more can you ask for really i give it a three out of five nice uh, then what did we watch remy then uh we watched still on the 11th the by david the way lynch, the david Le yeah we watched a bunch of stuff on the 11th apparently uh we watched the david lynch debut film eraserhead erase oh man i always forget it's his debut it's his debut how do you debut with something like this? which also inspired us to delve into twin peaks this month yeah so. oh my um, goodness shout out to twin peaks uh, but yeah eraserhead this was like my, this was like my fourth viewing of eraserhead this was my what um, was this my third viewing and and uh, it's such a weird movie. It's such an interesting movie. It's, it intrigues. It's kind of a spellbinding movie. It deeply intrigues me. <laughs> yeah. But also isn't my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a good way to describe it. It's like endlessly interesting, but like at the same time, it doesn't. 
attached to me in the way I want it to. Yeah, you know? I don't get much emotional value out of this, um, but it but it fascinates me. Exactly, yeah. It, it, I just want to sit there and watch it, you know? Uh, <laughs> See great. what it's going to do. We, we watched this projected <laughs> onto... Um, the wall with the yeah. projectors that, and i think that was so fun i, I hung I up really a, hung that. up a nice like white canvas I, I think we need to do that again on it with some more of your criterions because we got some good criterions <laughs> that would like black and white criterions right? that would look good on a projection i just bought it happened one night and that would be a great movie to watch yeah like we that. need to we need to hit up some of some of these black and white because i think you got to do black and white on <laughs> the projection screen because they focus we have a we have a really terrible projection <laughs> they focus so much more on lighting then so yeah. like you need all the help you can get uh but i gave eraser head a four and a half out of five i also gave it a four and a half out of five very good movie uh then on the 12th i watched scooby-doo meets the harlem globetrotters um, good for him man. which i think this was <laughs> yes this was the last scooby this was the 50th scooby-doo movie i watched amazing uh this was the other of the same run as meets batman um and honestly this is like all the same problems but it's just more fun i think <laughs> like i think the mysteries are more interesting in cool. this one and the harlem globetrotters surprisingly are really <laughs> are really goofy fun side characters I mean, th- you know when you said scooby-doo meets the harlem Glo- globetrotters i was like you know that sounds like a really good time <laughs> the only problem is, is it doesn't quite know what to do with that big of a cast most that's of the a time. lot of people yeah so like especially in the second part because both of these are split up into two parts yeah especially in the second part uh it feels like the harlem globetrotters are just kind of there because yeah that's fair they actually have a lot to do in the first one again the stuff i caught from that one looked fun uh but i also gave it a three out of five cool um late that night like i was i i probably should have been asleep deep into the recesses of the night realistically i watched um isaac rodriguez's uh the stream which for some reason isn't on IMDb. I keep looking for it. <laughs> um, but it's a very good movie. For those who don't know who Isaac Rodriguez is, he's a... Who doesn't uh, know Isaac Rodriguez? He's like really. an independent director who I've recently fallen in love with his work. He's very good. Um, he, he does like low the budget. Very, very low budget. And he, he, needs very better, low budget he needs better He needs better actors. Very low budget horror movies. This is easily my favorite of his work. It's like genuinely great i think deadware is great in a very specific way deadware is very unique it's like it's like this underground greatness this one is like just genuinely a great horror movie um and i definitely recommend it uh if you want to like watch it during spooky season it's on tubi right now it's called the stream dude tubi has a stacked horror movie it is fantastic i love the camera work i love the lighting love the performances love the horror stuff it's a great movie. Tubi has so many horror movies. <laughs> yeah. They're crazy. I uh, gave it a four out of five. Nice. It's a good time. <laughs> uh, then on the 13th, I watched a, I watched something on... on a, oh, well, I guess... Yeah, uh, yeah. Shout out, shout out to... Um, I was about to say, I, I didn't really this. want to talk... Like, I wasn't going to talk about Twin not Peaks. A, not in any sub- um, substance. We're not even on any, the 12th, we watched... We started uh, Twin Peaks. We watched, we watched the, the pilot. pilot of Twin Peaks, and I love it, and I think it I've might loved, be my new I've favorite loved, TV I've show. I've loved Twin Peaks so much so far, it's and we're so like three good. episodes in. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, um, if, you, if you've if you seen us in person, of course we love Twin right, Peaks. Yes, one look we at love us. Twin Peaks. Uh, but yeah, it was great. Uh, I love it. Then on the 13th, I watched a 2B horror movie. Uh, I watched uh, Phenomena. How dare you call uh, an Argento movie a 2B Ravi, horror Ravi, look at Argento's track record. <laughs> yeah i mean like tubi has a lot of his stuff but like how could you um but this movie is absolutely insane i had no idea what to expect i had only i had only yeah. seen suspiria and this is very similar in a lot of ways to suspiria but this is just absolutely insane like literally that's what i love to the hear plot about is the plot is insane it's like a goblin child and an entomologist with a monkey sidekick <laughs> And, like, a girl who can telepathically communicate with bugs. This sounds like the greatest movie ever made, And, like, it's so (laughs) weird. It's so weird, but it's pretty darn fun. It doesn't fully work on a lot of levels. It's nowhere near as good as Suspiria, and it does not feel like it has any of those elements tying together in any good way at all. But it still works. (laughs) uh, And it's fun. So I gave it a three and a half Can't wait to see it, man. It It looks like a blast. The soundtrack is fantastic, by the way goblin goblin went off i love goblin man (laughs) uh but on the 13th i watched uh another isaac rodriguez film a town full of ghosts not as good um kind of odd it's another found footage movie like exclusively found footage um and it does it 
relatively well. I wish it was a bit more engaging, and it, it just lacks a lot of urgency throughout its runtime. You know, like it, there's nothing really pushing it to do anything. Uh, but it's fun. I gave it a three out of five. And speaking of towns and found <laughs> footage, uh, I watched on the what was that? Probably the fourteenth. I don't know. I clicked in already. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Savage, it was the Savage Land. Um, Savage Land. An indie mockumentary horror movie. Um, yes. Which is very interesting. I can't wait it's, to see it's it. It's very unique, especially <laughs> being that none of the crew seemed to ever do anything else besides <laughs> this. Like, they came out of nowhere, did this, and just didn't do anything else. Which They makes... dropped a classic, and then just <laughs> they, knew, they knew they couldn't top it, Mike. <laughs> uh, this has a really great sense of atmosphere. It, it, it works with its... <laughs> like, it, it genuinely has good documentary filmmaking for nice. a mockumentary. Um and it has a great sense of building tension and using its horror, like its its more horrifying elements, uh, which are mostly just like pretty much all just still pictures. Which is really... very interesting to me. Like the more I hear you describe it, I'm like, okay, I'm very intrigued. Like how you would utilize a documentary in like a, which I mean, like I can imagine. Yeah, it uses like, very essentially it uses, see... it uses essentially different story point of views partnered with really really good photography creepy yeah. pictures to build a really unique horror kind of like well like horror quote unquote experience. Yeah. And just a really fun story to watch unfold. I think it's genuinely really fantastic. Nice. Uh, my biggest thing is my biggest problem with it is the the ending just leaves something to be desired because the entire movie builds up to really want you to show what's actually like at least like a taste of what's going <laughs> on um, and the taste that they give you is just kind of underwhelming. That's fair. I would love, I would love, I would love to give these guys a big budget, let them do <laughs> like a like literally a five minute or less scene just depends something just, to the end yeah and just cut the little thing they have and add that i think that would make it like practically perfect nice um but i really loved it uh, i gave it a four out of five nice on the 14th i watched a netflix film called day uh day fish day fish day shift day fish day fish uh day shift it's a uh comedy action comedy about vampire hunters um and it's pretty good i don't know uh the Dave Franco inclusion was not my favorite, but I think it's pretty fun. I like it. Um, it just really is... It, it kind of suffers from the same problem as a lot of Netflix projects, where it just doesn't feel like it really has a voice behind it. Um, it just kind of shoots everything and takes all of its choices exactly the way you'd expect. And it just makes for kind of a bland movie. Um, but it's fun. Uh, Jamie Foxx is fun. I liked most of the comedy. Uh, and also Snoop Dogg for as little bit of uh, as he is in the movie. He's like the highlight of the movie. He's so good. <laughs> I didn't expect him to be a good actor, but he actually is really good in this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I gave it a three and a half out of five. Nice. And then on the 14th, I, w- I sat down and watched, while you were watching uh, Savage, Land. Savage Land, I sat down and watched Murder by Television. Which is a uh, Bella Lugosi th- a thriller, mur- a horror film. I don't know. Um, it was interesting. It was from the 30s, uh, so pretty early on in Bella's career, as far as I know, anyway. Um, and it was it was pretty boring. It's pretty early on in anybody's film career, <laughs> right? But yeah, Murder by Television, uh, epic epic name for a movie, but just kind of boring. I don't know. The prop design for the television camera that they use is really cool, um, and you know, Bella Lugosi's performance is also really good. But like, that's about it. It's kind <laughs> of a, it's like one of the most boring whodunits I've ever seen, and that's that that's saying something, you know? Dang. <laughs> but yeah, no, it it was it was. Not very good. I gave it a two and a half out of five. Uh, then on the fifteenth, we watched Scream Two for Scream the first two, time, baby. Uh, then on the sixteenth, uh, I sat myself down <laughs> and watched uh, Evil Dead, but uh, the twenty thirteen Evil Dead. Yes, um, which is a very interesting a movie because yeah. it's got a really, it's got a pretty darn high average on Letterboxd, so I feel like it's loved, but I have no idea. I don't really know <laughs> because the people I follow are very split on it, um, and like most of the top reviews are negative for it. Uh, but I thought it was really fantastic. I thought it was really, really just like over the top fun. You have me very excited to watch it. Um, I thought it was just like a, a fun romp gore fest with a decent emotional core, a really fun set of characters, and like literally the gore is is just like the highlight. I think its direction is really fun. 
I think it's, it's like set design and visual effects are great. Like I, I don't understand not liking <laughs> this again. I have not seen Evil Dead. Uh, yeah, I don't. The I first one. Yeah. Don't know if I will ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, f- because of what's in it. That's fair. But like, um, you know. Like it's, I understand it's no Sam Raimi. You feel the lack of Sam Raimi's charm in this, even just as a movie. It feels a lot more basic than anything I've little, ever seen. A little more vanilla. In yeah, its and than, than anything I've ever seen Sam Raimi do, whether it's horror or not. <laughs> I love Sam Raimi. Um, man. He's a very he's so such like a fun you can feel this style wanting to play towards Sam Raimi's direction, this kind of horror movie. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, what is there is really fantastic, in my opinion. It's nice. a very simple, very to the point very fun very very insane literally I, w- I would still call it the most gory film i've ever seen um and it's got a it's it's got an interesting message like it's interesting takeaway cool. of wh- how it deals with its themes i'm um, i'm really excited to watch it now <laughs> no i really loved it actually yeah. which i w- did not know what to expect going into it uh and i gave it a four and a half out of five very cool gotta love it uh and then just like a few i i guess like an hour like ago an hour and 30 well because we, 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 maybe two hours probably about two hours ago we at this point scream we 2. watched scream 2 again and again I, I sat there for like half an hour deciding whether or not i wanted to give it a four or four <laughs> and a half and i couldn't I, I was like you know what i can't bring myself to give it a lower rating i'm gonna give it a four and a half even though i don't know I'm, I'm still so torn on it I it's a know. very interesting movie it's kind it's of it's kind of rides the weird line of being really really good <laughs> and really troubled yeah but yeah, that that is what we watched. That is what we watched. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this episode. I feel like I, I feel like I was a bit more together in this one than I was on my scream episode. Maybe I <laughs> we was, were very tired on the scream. I was episode, about to say to maybe maybe I was getting sick and being tired. Yeah, we were both I, we were both not feeling good. We were both tired. There was there was a lot the stacked against us on scream. <laughs> Uh, but I felt that that was a good discussion. There you go. Uh, go watch Crimson Peak if you're old enough. Yeah. Uh, go check out Savage Land. It would be it would be like a a very mild rated R or a, a very heavy PG thirteen. My if official you're recommendation is The Stream by Isaac Rodriguez. <laughs> go watch it. It's and go cool. go watch some Scooby Doo. Go watch some Scooby Doo. We watched a lot of good movies this yeah, week, honestly. We did. Um, it's a good and, time. And I'm excited as we get a little closer to Halloween. I'm going to shift gears from horror to a bit more of like those the classic spooky, classic bit more spooks. macabre than actually scary um but you know you got to enjoy october for for binging a bunch of horror movies i was about to say i'm about to start my shutter trial <laughs> and then I'm, we're gonna get a big big surge in how many movies i'm watching i was about to say we still got to hit up Coraline, corpse yeah. bride maybe i want to revisit i want to i want to revisit paranorman paranormal um, box dude i feel like I, I, why haven't Hubie, we done a paranormal Hubie episode? Halloween. Go listen to our Hubie Halloween episode. Like, that there, movie there's a lot of there's a lot of classics we yeah. still got to hit up before yeah. before the season is out. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, go enjoy some. Go have a good month. Go have a good October. Start Absolutely. out to October. It's a great month Shout of the year. October. Start um, wearing hoodies. Start wearing hoodies. Flannels. Hoodies rock. <laughs> jackets, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Start dressing like you're in Twin Peaks. Exactly. <laughs> that, that's the takeaway. <laughs> Uh, And we will see you guys next week.